of she, dynamite though. She hits the ball hard. Yep. We're going to have a look at her major strength right away. Her return of serve. Nobody other than Groff does it as well as as Celis. Nobody attacks as she does. And this is a, such a critical game to Chris Everett, whose serve has faltered in the last couple of years more than any other department of her game. matches as a loss is set it's love 30 Dropped the first set to serve and volley Ann Hen Hendrickson in the first round and had a tight first set as well with Stan Smith, with uh, Ann Smith and Sean Stafford. So she knows that she's got to come out swinging. Sixteen. Maleva, seemingly in control of that, and over in the grandstand, Martina Navratilova. The winners of those two matches will then face. drop shot made her sell us come in and let go with one hand but she was able to handle it Chris didn't have much choice here the ball is very short and low by the time she got to it so she tried a drop shot and sell us one handed rolls it cross court you can see Chris was over to the right of the center service line anticipating a shot down the line so now it's deuce
take some starch out of you. That was one tough point. Advantage ever. It's a pretty loud one on one end of the court as well. That is a very unusual noise. Yeah, a writer from the San Francisco Chronicle described Monica Sells as having the power of Borg, the grunt of Connors, and the laugh of Woody Woodpecker. She tried to, Sellis tried a few different things in that rally with Chris, tried to hit her a couple of floaters. Chris calmly handled the situation. Tough game, but the first one goes to Chris Everett. First point of the second game. Monica Sellis against Chris Everett. Now, though it's not as gusty as it's been the last couple of days, there is some wind out there. You look up at those flags at the top of the stadium, you can see them standing straight out. That means you have to adjust when you switch ends. And see those flags? Also very bright. Monica tells a story of growing up in Yugoslavia, and she said the only tennis that was ever on TV was Chris Everett against Martina. She, she said she thought those were the only two women who played tennis. Nicely done by Chris. And Monica said, I have no idea there are 128 draws. 1540. And this could just be first blood right here, Everett, with two break point chances off that nice slide down the line. do as well is find the short court on the other side of the net. She moves hard and again any kind of early ball she takes and hits hard. is why she's quitting the game. She said, I just don't have the patience to go out there and stand the court hitting moon balls for three hours against players half my age anymore. And she said, patience used to be the trademark of my game. Chris said, I think I fooled myself into believing that I can get better or I wanted to work on something these last few years, but let's face it, my game has declined. Still, she's up too low. And the two long rallies she's gotten in, she's won both of them. <laughs> she wants this match. Maleva has won in two sets. And she'll meet the winner of this match, which is going on right now in the grandstand. 
two love in the stadium. Every. She lost control because she had broken her string in the second point of that rally, Celis. And once the string breaks on those oversized rackets, you've got no control. She should have tried to end the point on the next shot she could hit and try to slide it somewhere. You know, to put the uh, successes of Chris Everett in perspective, Jimmy Connors has won more tournaments in men's tennis than anybody in the history, 107. Chris has won 50 more than that, 157 tournaments. You talk about a great career. 30, 30. Her husband, Andy Mill. right on the money, isn't she? I mean, she's really putting together a thoughtful, intelligent match, mixing it up. Has Celis on the baseline and then throws in that little drop shot there. It surprised Monica. They need to see where she hit it, right down the middle of the court, so there's no angle if she does get to it. Chris lost to Monica earlier this year monica said she was exhausted from all the happiness she felt at the time <laughs> took a couple of weeks off and again that was on clay a service that chris no longer loves doesn't have the patience The stadium starting to fill. In fact, it's almost completely full. And that shot from the Fuji blimp piloted by Mary Sink of Roanoke, Virginia today. Great day to be up there. Great day to be watching tennis. You kind of get the feeling Silas is changing her mind about how to attack Chris. Tries, tried those moon balls but didn't hang with it that last point. Well, Chris didn't get into that moon ball and with her either. She took it right away. It's a big game right here because it's still two break points for Chris. If she can win this, she goes out to a four-love lead in this first set. And Chris is a notoriously slow starter. So, boy, if she can get ahead, she's going to be awfully tough to beat. shots and that is pinning Celis behind that baseline and she can't get Chris on the defensive Chris Everett's 19th US Open Celis is first Thirty 
you think that's what's determining this match? I, I'm kind of feeling that way, too, that this is a, a little too overwhelming an occasion for Sellers to pull off the big win. And I think what she said in, in our opening, in our tease, that uh, if this is Chris's last tournament, it makes it more difficult for Sellers. <laughs> Done. Chris Everett was 15 years old once. As a matter of fact, in 1973, when Chris was 15, she beat Margaret Court in a tournament in Charlotte. 7-6, seven, 7-6, six, seven, six, and Court had just won the Grand Slam three weeks earlier. That win, and then her last French Open win against Martina Navratilova, are the two Chris Everett cherishes the most in her nearly 20-year career. For second on the day. And that is in respect for Celis' ground strokes return of serve. She knows if she just ladles that second serve in, Monica's going to jump all over it. has been in this country since 1986. She was named at 12 the Sportswoman of the Year in Yugoslavia. By 13, she'd won the European Championships and the World Championships. She met Nick Boletari at the Orange Bowl in 85, a tournament she won. And by the next year, she was living in Florida full time. She has a break point. Again, Chris made Celis let go and try to make a passing shot with one hand. You'll see her as she takes her out of position. Celis knows she can barely get there, so she has to let go and what is able to pull off this one-hander down the line. You're normally in pretty good shape if you can make the two-hander let go. difference the two handers are between these two Chris so controlled and structured Celis you know not at all mechanical or restricted very free and relaxed much better This is one of the difference in the two-handers. Chris doesn't roll hers as well. Monica can roll this little angle. She brushes up the back of the ball, takes some speed off. It makes it dip more quickly, which gets her a better angle on the passing shot. Break point. She is, by the way, a lefty. She's got two hands all over the place. She said, my game isn't really like anyone's. I didn't structure it like anyone else's. You know how young she is when she says she grew up watching Steffi Groff play. <laughs> and Steffi's that was 20. depressing. That was depressing <laughs> to hear. She never saw you kick any field goals, did she? I don't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. And then and then for Chris Everett, and a chance here for Monica to stay in the first set. And 
marvel at the composure of the youngsters. 20,000 people out here. just put so much more heat behind that last shot she struck. And that's what drew the error. That's what beat Chris is the pace of that last shot from Sellis. Another break point. What a big game. point against herself slid it slid it short to the Celis forehand and Celis once again hit it into the net it must be a tough shot using her grips to make that play and again this is the only game that can keep her in this first set Point number six coming up. this is a very demanding game this point is tough Chris now rolls this ball to get it down she didn't drive it so it would stay up and make an easy volley for Monica and so she has saved five break points psychologically this has a, an interesting aspect to this set too and the match as a matter of fact Chris saying, I'm 34, and I'm a veteran, and I'm getting tired, and I'm not so eager and all this, but I'm hanging tough. Stadium, Pat Summerall with Mary Curlow and Tony Trabert. Crowd still settling and filing in, looking for a place to sit down. Pat, you know, this is a, an amazing start for Chris because she is a slow starter normally. And uh, you could have bet me anything, it, she wouldn't be leaving five love in the first set. I'm down here with Nick Balatieri, Monica Salish's coach. Nick, I'm sure this isn't how you envision this going. 
Well, I think uh, Monica decided to let Everett uh, serve to begin with. She had a 30 love to miss that easy ball and make it 40. And I think now what Monica has to do is stop the unforced errors and move Chris. And hopefully when Chris runs to a forehand side, we'll start making a few errors. Uh, I think that uh, what's happened is that she's making so many unforced errors and not giving Chris the time. And of course, Chris got everything working for today. She's got the crowd and she's got a great record. So I think that a lot of pressure's on Monica. But Monica's not out of the match yet if she stops the unforced errors. Right, we'll see. Back to you. She has 14 of those unforced errors, by the way. It's a pretty closely contested five love match. This is, it doesn't feel like a rout. It really doesn't. They ask Monica at the moment. <laughs> You're right. She's not playing poorly. Chris is just playing extremely well. 15, now that's what Nick was just talking about. If you can keep the ball and play with Chris, move her some, and then you might extract a few errors on the forehand side. It's 15 30. and with that two set points for Chris Everett. Chris sets up so nicely for this one. Surprises Monica by going down the line. She'd been rolling across court. Catches her a little bit flat-footed. 